So where did sin come from, and how do we understand the term sin from a biblical perspective? We are in a series called Theology 101. I'm Ben. I'm the lead pastor here at Life Fellowship Church. I'm here with Josh, our producer, and Dan decided not to show up for the sin talk. How dare he? (laughs) I mean, doesn't he must think he's better that he doesn't need to talk about sin? I mean, I think he. I think we should spend 15 minutes deciding whether it is sin that he did not come here for the sin conversation. (laughs) I think we should have like a really deep inception level. That's good. I like that. I like that. Um, so, so sin, it, the doctrine of sin is called hamartiology. Remember, I, I think I mentioned this uh, a couple episodes ago, but we, we've grouped some of these theologies together. Mm-hmm. Anthropology, hamartiology, soteriology, which is the doctrines of man, sin, and salvation. They all kind of are intertwined. And yeah. so we spent a couple times or a couple episodes talking about mankind Um and so now we're going to dig deeper into the issue of sin. So again, some of this will be overlap, but I've got six major points to talk about with sin. Okay, and if we'll try to we'll try to do like the, um, I'll I'll do three and then we'll stop. Okay, <laughs> because I, I <laughs> we're already planning. <laughs> I'm, I sometimes wonder like I oh yeah this will be one episode. And it's like oh no it's two or, it's three. Two or three. So anyways, yeah. um, we'll start with the first point, which is sin is a reality. There's a reality of sin. Any, you know, I got this definition from um, uh, the guy who writes, uh, I'm just drawing a blank right now. One of my, one of my, my favorite theologian. You hate that. I'm, I'm drawing a blank. Anyways, I'll give him credit later on. Uh, he came up with a definition of sin that said, any failure to conform to the moral law of God in act, attitude, motivation, or nature. I added motivation there. But the idea is, Sin, sin is a reality because what, there is a there is an ultimate God of the universe, mm-hmm. ultimate lawgiver, and anything that is not conformed to His righteousness, His character, His nature yeah. is therefore sin. And so, um, we there, there, the Bible talks about this in a number of different ways. Uh, there's different words for sin. One one word for sin means to miss the mark, that there's this idea of a holy standard. Think of a bullseye, mm-hmm. and the bullseye is the perfect righteousness of God. Yeah. And when we sin and don't hit that righteous mark, no matter what degree you're off, it's sin. Right. Uh, Romans 3.23 is a great example of that. Um, that. Another word for sin is a word, uh, and this is both true in the Old Testament and New Testament, Sometimes you'll see words like transgression or iniquity yeah. translated. Sometimes these words mean rebellion. It's the act of the will that says, okay. I'm not just, I just didn't get a degree off here. My will to do this is is wrong. It's for exa- factoring intention in a lot more. For, exa- for example, even when um, uh, Saul, when he was given his uh, charge to you know, to do certain things. Uh, I want you to wipe out the Amalekites. And Saul was like, well, I did everything but the, but the king and the women or in, in the, um, and the animals. That was an act of saying you did, there was a willful act that you said, I will not fully obey. That is sin. A lot of times we think rebellion is I'm, I'm just going to do the exact opposite of God. And that, that could be true, but sometimes rebellion is, I'm not doing what I should be doing. Yeah, it could be it's, sin of omission also. Right. And that's that's the term. Sin of commission is, I'm, I'm, I'm doing something wrong. I'm killing, I'm stealing, right. I'm lying. Sin of omission is this idea of, I'm not doing what I should be doing. Yeah. Okay. Um, the other word for sin that's used is like lawlessness. You know, you can miss the mark by not living righteously but there's almost a complete uh, the on the other end of the spectrum is this sense of I don't even want to be close to what God wants me to do. Hmm. You know, c- certain people will yeah. say, you know, for example, throughout this, I- I've heard this a lot when I was growing up. Like, as long as you love each other, you can have sex. Like, you have this God's standard of sexuality: husband, man, and woman; husband and wife within a covenant of marriage. And in my day and age, it was. Hey, at least as long as you're in a long-term committed relationship, sex is okay. Now it's literally like whatever you feel like doing. Yeah. There, there's no bounds. But this sense of 
we can make make up our own kind of rules over here that's a little bit off or lawlessness was just just it doesn't really matter so and, and then the other reality of sin and again this is something we'll get into a little bit later is that the bible refers to a sin nature Mm-hmm. And so, great example of this. Uh, so, so, rebellion, First Samuel chapter fifteen, First John three verse four, lawlessness, Second Thessalonians two, uh, chapter two verse seven. The state and the nature of sin is Romans five verse eight. So, all those are passages that you could read and look up and and you know see that there's different when when the Bible talks about sin, it's a it's 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 there's some variety there there's some texture there it's not just one thing so i think it's important that we understand because of because of of who man is because of who god is there's going to be some there's many ways in which we can rebel and do our own thing against god um so that's number 1 and i think the reason why that's important is when you take away god that's why the belief why agnosticism and athe- atheism is is so important for someone who simply says, I want to do what I want to do. So many people that claim atheism, there's a root in there that says, I don't want a moral lawgiver telling me what is right and wrong. And so I think it's important for us to understand that the re- the, because God exists and man exists as a creation of God, the reality of sin is there. Yeah. So I think that's that's important. Number two, um, the qu- the question is where did sin come from? All right, Josh, I'm sure that you have have debated people about this about about morality in general a lot. Yes. <laughs> morality in <laughs> On general, college campuses. Yes, <laughs> a lot of outreach. Um, so where did sin come from then? Did sin? Did God create sin? Like, there's a question here of of where did sin originate from? Right. There is a um, Many of the Eastern religions talk about there's a sense of dualism there. If you remember the, if you've ever seen the symbol of the yin and the yang, mm-hmm. okay, you, it's that white teardrop and the black teardrop kind of intermingling with little dots in mm-hmm. in between, which is the sense that good and evil are are, are universal transcendent forces in the world, mm-hmm. and they're constantly at battle with each other. The reason why, what they say is th- if good exists, therefore evil must exist because it's the opposite of good. Right. The The, the problem with that is if you do not have a, a transcendent God who creates all things, who is eternal, you know, we go back to the, the, the nature and the character of God. Um, sin and evil exi- did not exist in that time period because God, God did, there was no opportunity for God to, his state and his nature is, is completely good. Right. There's no, there was no evil. There was no sin. Um, The moment that God created um, beings with a, with, with a will to whether obey or not obey, that's when it got, that's when sin became potential and possible. It's the possibility the, of sin. The possibility of sin became when God created beings less than him, yeah. who, which means they had to be less than him, with the potential to say, I can choose to disobey. Yeah. There's the only two beings that have been able, that are able to do that are the the angelic or the spirit realm or the, the sons of God in that realm, and then the in humanity. Right. Those are the two created beings that have... And again, we'll get into the angelology of of God's uh, created beings that are oh nice that that, that arrived before we did. I'm looking forward to it. Um, but but we know that f- because we were given the opportunity to sin, mm-hmm. they given the opportunity to rebel. That opened the door for it to become possible. Yeah. Okay. So I, I think it's Im- important to remember that it's not. Don't look at sin. Don't look at good and evil as these eternal dualistic forces, there is a, a reality of, um, they, they became, sin came from the opportunity of created beings yeah. to make it possible. Yeah. It's re- that, that is really important. It's, I think some Christians sometimes believe, well, God, you know, sin came from the devil and, you know, devil was always bad and he's kind of like the opposite of God. And yes, that's not, 
it's not that Satan is, is, is in charge of all the evil things. God's in charge of all the good things. And they're kind of like these, these opposite forces. That's what I was going to say. I was going to talk about all the Christians that, that when they talk about bad things happening, it's like, it's always because Satan did this thing to them, mm. or there's a spiritual warfare thing going on. There's all yeah. these demons kind of going after them about everything. And it kind of feels <laughs> like there's not nearly enough appreciation of how much humans are terrible. Oh, yes. I, we yep. always want to focus on the devil made me do <laughs> it or, or whatever, like it. all that kind of thing. It's like, come on. Yeah. Like, okay, I'm not going to say, I'm obviously spiritual warfare is a thing. Yeah. I don't fully understand it. I'm interested in it, but I feel like regardless of how much of it is, humans are so bad. We're bad enough. Like we can focus a 100%. lot on that. I mean, I think if we talked about the world, the flesh, and the devil, right? If if the world really because was overcome in this, and Satan was done away with, our flesh would still find a way, right? It, it maybe it wouldn't be as bad. I don't know, but but we cannot, we can never underestimate our ability to do what is wrong. Yeah. Um, and there's a biblical term for that called total depravity. Yeah. That we'll get we'll get to there. We'll get we'll get there. All right. So. We have the reality of sin. It exists. We have where sin comes from because of there being created beings with wills that God allowed to come into the world. And then number three, uh, I want to talk about inherited guilt. Inherited guilt. So um, inherited guilt is this idea that we are all guilty because of Adam's sin. Now, this is, we're going to talk about two concepts here, inherited guilt and inherited corruption. Um Inherited guilt is this idea that because Adam sinned, we are now all sinners. Now, Romans chapter 5, if you want to re- write this down, Romans chapter 5, verse 12 through 21, Paul does an amazing job talking about the reality of how Adam's sin has affected all of us. That's very important because we do not start off with this clean slate. Now, this is this is where for, for us as people who want to understand what Jesus came to, to do, I believe there are a lot of people who don't really understand the nature of sin and the activity of sin. Tell me more about okay, that. Okay, so so let's let's think a little bit about this. Yeah. When we ask Jesus to forgive us of our sins, yes. One of the things that we can do is we can think of, uh, there are some people that think Jesus came to, like, there's, the, I have this sin account mm-hmm. of wrong, wrongful deeds that I have done, mm-hmm. and that by the blood of Jesus and the sacrifice of Jesus, he wipes them, my sin account clean. And there's a reality, there, there's a truth to that. There is a component of salvation that is that. Yeah. But if we only think of sin as, all my deeds have been forgiven, that's not really the fullness of what Christ came to do because the reality is it, Christ didn't just come to wipe away your sin account. He also came to change the, your very nature. And so when, when it says that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, it doesn't just mean we have done bad things. Mm-hmm. It also means I, I am a bad person. That those are, they have to go together. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people think I am this, I start off in neutral, like when I'm born, I'm in neutral. And therefore, in my neutrality, I can either sin and do bad things, mm-hmm. or I can do righteousness and do, do good things, but I, I'm in a state of neutrality. And whoever pushes me, whether it's Satan or the world, I can do bad or my flesh, or if Jesus pushes me, I'm... The Bible doesn't talk about being in neutral. You are either a new creation in Christ or you have a, the, the, a sinful nature. Right. So I think it's important for us to remember that you, when what Christ came to do is not just wipe away the, the guilt of your actions. There is something fundamentally core wrong with you. Right. This is what the Bible calls... Um, total depravity. This idea that we have, we have, we have fallen, and we, we, we do. You know, a lot of times when you when you think of the word, when you hear the term total depravity, what does that what does that conjure up in your mind? Calvinism. <laughs> and many conversations I've had in the past with Calvinism. my good friends who are Calvinists. Yeah. So, so a lot of times, 
it sounds so bad, doesn't yeah. it? Like yeah. you're totally depraved. Right. Yeah. And really, totally depraved does not mean you are always going to do the most horrible thing at all times. Yeah. That's not what total depravity means. It kind of sounds like that. Total depravity simply means we cannot become holy on our own. Yeah. That's all that it means. There are some there are some people, instead of looking at it as we have a propensity to sin and we cannot become righteous on our own. That's what that's what total depravity means. It does not mean that we will always walk around as these monsters who will always do evil. Because of the image of God, we still have, you know, uh, Romans talks about how the law of God has been written on our hearts. We have this conscience that we've been given that we have a sense of right and wrong. Mm-hmm. There's a reason why in the history of man, in every moral law code uh, across that spans human history and cultures and everywhere, it's always wrong to murder someone. Yeah, It's always wrong to take someone's wife. It's always wrong to lie. It's always wrong to steal. Like there's these fundamental things that that are transcendent morality that you see from the, the law. Now, it doesn't mean that they've got all the right laws, but there is an ingrained sense of right and wrong that we have. I love what, I can't remember if this was with, if it was C.S. Lewis or someone else, but someone said, we all know if someone, we all have a sense of right and wrong when someone cuts in front of you in line. Yeah. At that moment, yeah. you say, yeah. there's something wrong with that. Well, yeah. why? Yeah. Right? So I think this idea of total depravity is the sense of, okay, I have inside of me a sense that I want what I want. Now, sometimes what I want is good and sometimes what I want is bad. But without Christ, I will gravitate towards putting myself at the center of the universe. And therefore, I will use people, I will abuse people, I will harm people in order for me to get what I want. Yeah. So this idea of, you know, the Bible is very clear on this. A couple of passages of scripture just to, to go over with you. Uh, Jeremiah 17, 9, the Bible says that the heart is deceitful above all else. Uh, Psalm 51, verse 5, David says, I was brought forth in iniquity, this idea that I was born this way. Yeah. Okay. Um, Titus 1, 15 talks about our minds and our consciences are corrupted. Okay. Yeah. So inside we have these this, this internal problem, minds, heart, conscience. And then Romans 8, 8 says, we cannot please God by nothing that we do. So there is this understanding that we cannot do anything to achieve the holiness of God, that we've inherited this corruption, we've inherited this guilt. Um, I talked about this in one of our previous episodes about seminal headship and federal headship, right? This idea that when you, the reason why why we have this sin nature, we don't start off in neutral, we don't start off with this pure, clean slate. No, we're born with this sense of, I'm going to do what's wrong. Yeah, We get this from Adam, this with the sinful nature. And again, the seminal headship means I was in Adam when he did this. Federal headship means Adam was my representative. But here's what ultimately what you and I need to have you ever, you know, you ever think about the story of, of the Garden of Eden? And you're like all the time. Like, Adam, come on. Like, what's wrong with you, bro? <laughs> like you're in you're in paradise. You're with you're with the woman of your dreams. You have dozens, if not hundreds, of fruit trees to eat from. Yeah. There's one stinking tree, God says, don't eat of that and you decide to go hang out by it and listen to a creature it's just as like have you ever have you you ever had like adam what in the world sure (laughs) yes absolutely although i think i think more lately i'm more like boy i have been manipulated so often by so many people i probably would have totally fallen for this why why am i actually better yes exactly the whole point of us thinking about this is that you would have done the same thing. Yeah. None of us should ever think if I was in the garden in Adam's position, I would I would have done differently. No. You wouldn't have. You would have done the same thing. At least eventually. I, I mean, yeah, maybe it would have taken another day. A week maybe tops. So, yeah. Some of you would have taken sooner. Some of you maybe a couple <laughs> days later. But the reality <laughs> is you would have done what Adam and Eve had done. Right. There's no one on this planet that can look and say, I would have chosen differently. Yeah. So that's what it means that yeah. that we are in Adam and because of Adam's sin, all have sinned. So this it's very important that the inherited guilt, the inherited corruption, that this understanding of sin when Jesus came to to change to 
to confront and overcome this uh, overcome sin it wasn't just you did bad things it was to have new creation yeah so we're running out of time do you have any questions i have a lot of all right questions. so what we're gonna do we'll come back we'll start with the questions okay. and we'll uh we have a couple more points to go through with hamartiology sound I'm looking good looking forward to it all right guys thank you so much for this uh for for taking the time to listen to this uh episode on sin where did sin come from the reality of sin inherited guilt and corruption these are all important things we need to understand not only for ourselves but as we as we parent as we are in our work environments it's so helpful to know that i should not expect people to live righteously who are not who don't have the nature and character of Christ in them. So um pray for them. Have have a sense of passion and compassion for those who struggle with sin just like you do. So thank you again for joining us on Life Talks. We'll talk to you next time.